Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the Steve Jones Show here on News Radio 1070 WKOK on a Wednesday. Matt Catrillo here with you. Steve will soon be there from the Sunbury Motors Studio, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, and online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Kia, Hyundai, all new pre owned inventory, great service department, and excellent sales staff, all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, and online at sunburymotors.com. Now we officially turn the page to the Villanova Wildcats today, and this is a good team in the FCS, top 10, just dismantled Bucknell a few weeks ago. A lot of offensive firepower from what I've seen so far. So, and of course, they have played some Patriot League schools in there. And as Steve mentioned yesterday, they did play uh, Richmond and, and beat them last week. And there's also actually a local connection. The backup is Connor Watkins from Loyal Stock. So... Just a little local in there. He did throw his first career touchdown pass against Bucknell a couple weeks ago. So he'll be making the trip home. Will he make the field? Well, we'll see. Maybe later on if Penn State can ultimately take care of business. But, and again, I'm, maybe the, I haven't heard a whole lot of the trap game conversation come up. And, of course, you know, Steve won't because he doesn't believe in it, of course. But... I don't know if I necessarily see it with this one either. Maybe if the Iowa game was flip-flop with Indiana, maybe I could see it. Because I think that Iowa game is going to be one of the bigger games of the year, though, of course, you have the big rematch with Indiana with everything that happened in week one of last year. But I think the way they played Ball State and I necessarily didn't see that as a trap game either, just simply because it was the home opener first time you had fans in two years. But because of the way they ultimately took care of business, I don't see this team taking anything for granted. I think, not that he hasn't had it before, but I think the 1-0 message that James Franklin preaches every year really resounds in the locker room this year. There's just... And we had Matt McLoin on a, a couple weeks ago, and he had that real interesting note and thought from this, from just observation from the sidelines that there's just something, you can tell that there might be something a little special with this team. And when I hear that, that tells me that team, this team is not going to, or that particular team, and this team in particular, is not going to make a habit of making losing plays, so to speak. And when Matt McGloin said that a couple weeks ago, while that is sort of an eye, eyebrow-raising type of comment, I kind of agree, and I kind of see that in this team. I think I see it more so in the defense. As I've said before, This is a, I think it's a championship-contending defense. But I really do see that everywhere, and I definitely see it now with the quarterback at Sean Clifford. I was starting to see it, but after the way he performed against Auburn, 
and I agree with Mark Wogenrich wholeheartedly when we had him on the show on Monday, that was the best performance I've seen in his career in a Nittany Lions uniform. So you throw all that together, and I don't see Penn State playing down to anybody and I think they're going to be ready to go and take care of business and win this Everyone game by multiple scores. the most scores. entertaining part of the show is like the beginning because that's the part where you're griping your brains out. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing the Eagles this time. I was just spitting out my Penn State thoughts as we officially turn our attention to Nova. Yeah, you know what? This is my attitude about Villanova. Well, you know, look, it, it's one thing to talk to somebody that's been around the block like I have and have seen a lot in his career, so you take everything seriously. Football, basketball. Yeah, I'm doing a basketball game. I mean, are the fans sitting there thinking in December a few years ago they're going to lose to southeast Louisiana on a three-point shot that grazes the backboard from the corner and goes in? Of course not. Okay? So, I've seen everything. Although I, I shouldn't, you know, I, I feel like now that I've seen three downs at a punt, I've seen everything. All right. <laughs> Valid point. All right. So I take everything seriously. Everything. Um. I always tell everybody I prepare every game the same way. It doesn't matter what the what the brand name happens to be on the other end of it. So to me, I look at Villanova this way. So let's just talk just quickly on personnel. Smith, the quarterback, has been around the block. And I mean he's been around the block. He's a sixth-year guy. Covington's a very good running back. I like him a lot. Good player. And their offensive line's good. Man, not great, but good enough for Covington to make some plays. And that's cool. This Benford kid on the really a heck of a cover guy. He's got four picks in three games. He's got eleven in his career. He's a good player. Not like they don't have players. They have players. They don't have the depth that Penn State does. And across the board, this you know, we all know it that Penn State has more talent to do. But Villanova does what it does. And they're very good at what quote they do. And you don't want to get yourself into a Montana Washington game. And my attitude is very simple. Penn State has been able to accrue a lot of capital in the first three weeks of the season. You can't afford to give any of it back. Can't I mean, you can't afford to give any of it back. So you have to have the attitude of you have to win this game. You have to win it. You don't win it by being lackadaisical in your approach. Now the coaches will allow you to be lackadaisical in approach. And I'll be honest, they were not lackadaisical on anything yesterday. It was good to see. But to me, that's the approach. That's the next game. You got to play it. And I tell everybody when, I, when you broadcast a game like that. So this and this goes to how you have to play it. I treat every game as if it could be a blowout. I treat every game as if it could go to the last second. I don't know what I'm going to get. See, I'm all about the preparation part of it and the execution of it. Um, for example. Um, so let me ask you this question, Matt. Next week, of course, will be Indiana. Are you a believer in revenge games? Yes. Right. 
It's the answer I expected. I'm not. I think, I, figured. Revenge, I think revenge games are really, really big for the fan base. And revenge games put more juice in the stands. But if you're lined up as an offensive tackle, and you got Anderson, the kid from Ole Miss, that transferred in across from you. Are you sitting there thinking revenge? Are you are you in your stance thinking I got to win my matchup? What are you supposed to be thinking at that point? Well, in their case, the matchup. That's right. That's why this doesn't enter into it. It's about how do you prepare to get ready for a game like that. Are you doing all the extras, watching a little extra video, looking back at last year's game? Here's where your fuel comes from from last year's game. Did I cause a procedure penalty? I need to eliminate that. Was I called for holding? I need to eliminate that. Did I blow a coverage? I need to, I need to correct that. As Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until you get hit. Guess what happens in the first play of the game? You get hit. And you got three to three and a half hours of that. I I think for the fans, absolutely. I think the fuel it puts into the fan base and the fuel it puts into the energy in the stadium is significant. For the coaches and the players, it's about work. I mean, you're standing there, you're in the fourth quarter of this game, you've been you've been fighting your guts out. You thinking about last year's game? The only thing I'll say in this case is these are, while be it in for Penn State, very mature 18 to 22 year olds. I alluded to that before you jumped on here. But you can't tell me that it's not in the back of their minds, maybe off the field, and maybe when they hear it in the crowd pregame. But yes, I totally agree that once they're once they're in practice, once they're on the field warming up and obviously in game, they're focused on the game. But I still think that that be, be, that atmosphere and that thought isn't 100% away from the team. That's for the fans. It's not for the team. It is not. You got to get to work. It's about it's about getting ready, and the teams are a little you know, That's not Stevie Scott back in there anymore. It's Stephen Carr, the transfer from USC. They're different. Different. They're di- you know some guys are the same. Some guys are different. And again, it's about you need to win that game. It's not about what happened last year. It's about I need to win now. Like this Saturday is like I need to win now. If I win now, a one and zero, we're four and zero. Back in, that's you know, that's a conference game. That's a division game. That's enough fuel to begin with. Now, for the fans, it'll juice them up. For the media, it'll give them something to talk about, write about the whole thing. Um, once again, I'll be the disappointing talk show host. I'll actually talk about it logically. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a fun guy on this stuff. I'm just not. The one thing that I I do agree on. I, mean, I don't is... I don't. I, I, I don't believe I don't believe in any of this stuff. Let's chop. We're chopping wood. Oh, for goodness sake. Take your take your axe and go out the back, will you? I mean, we're rowing the boat. Hey, you know what? Take your oar and just throw it, will you? I'm hey, Jack and I feel the same way. We think all this stuff is garbage. We're rowing the boat. We're chopping wood. It's Leo. It's like, oh for God, you need a saying to get ready? How about if you're not ready, they're gonna crush you? No, <laughs> okay, there's no, your motivation. No, senor. <laughs> They're gonna, yeah, you're not ready. They're going to kill out that. There's your motivation. 
I mean, come on. That's why I'm I'm the type of I mean, like I'm bad about this stuff. You know, for some reason you get on these lists. I don't know why. I think they're just whatever. You know, they get a hold of you through whatever. The word of the day. Do you think I've read one of the word of the days once? I'm sure that is a big no. No, I've deleted every one of them. <laughs> saying of the day. I'll get a saying of the day. Do you think I've ever read the saying of the day once? Also a no. No. <laughs> How do I need that for? It motivates you. Motivates you. You're going to wake up. You stink. They're going to fire you. Okay. How about that one? <laughs> I mean, you're not any good at it. They're going to get rid of you. How about that motivation? How about, how about, how about, like, you have a goal. My goal every single day I do this is to be better. My goal every single game I do is to be better than the last game. How do I figure out how to be better the next game? It's all inside me. I don't have anybody saying to me, see, you better be better. I don't have anybody telling me that. It's all internal. That's why I got the saying of the day, delete, get out of here. <laughs> I don't need that stuff. <laughs> you really need to have a saying of the day that gets you through the day? Really? You don't have enough pride in your... You need to have a saying? Let's go chop wood. Oh, for goodness sakes, really? Let's chop wood? <laughs> We're just out, we're chopping wood, we're chopping wood. I, I listen to these press conferences and I'm going, are, are you losing it? You have a group of people that need to, to, like, oh yeah, we're chopping wood. We're rowing the boat. I'm like going, what the heck are you talking about rowing the boat? How about like going out and beating somebody? I like out execute them. See, I'm just not a believer in that stuff. Never, I never have been. Here's your saying of the day. Oh, Really? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't do that stuff. Some people need it. I got Okay. You can do it. I sit back. You know me. What do I do to it? You ignore it. You let it go. I delete it. <laughs> and that too. <laughs> like, uh, All the above. And I think. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not off the list yet. Haven't they figured out that I don't keep, I don't read them? I don't even, know, I don't even open it. All right, back with more in a moment. <laughs> I know. I'm not the fun guy. I got it. You know, I got it. I'm not the fun guy. I'm not the I'm not the talk show host that let's let's do something controversial. Let's do this. Let's talk about you know revenge and hatred and everything. I think that's all nonsense. <laughs> that's like come on. You'd be shocked at, like, actually doing your job, what it means. All right, back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Taking your calls at 800 795 9565. This is The Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Great to have you with us on this, the first day of autumn. How about that? Love it. Autumn began officially. Sixteen, uh, let's see, 14 minutes ago. How about that? Favorite time of the year. Love when the trees turn. I mean, today, the weather today and tomorrow is lousy. But Friday... It's going to be spectacular. Saturday, spectacular. All right? All right, Northwestern. $480 million gift from the Ryan family. Now, you see Ryan Field, Welsh Ryan Arena, the Ryan Field House. <laughs> so, Pat and Shirley Ryan. Now, Pat Ryan started Aon Hewitt. They retired from this, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago. He's, I mean, he's 84 now. He's worth $7 billion. I always love these press releases. Oh, the Ryan, you know, it, it, some of the money's going to a medical center. Some money's going to Ryan Field. Going to do it in stages, it looks like. These press releases are so phony. Sometimes we just, I think, who comes up with this stuff? Uh, Derek Gregg, 
Athletic Director, we deeply appreciate the Ryan family's enduring dedication to our student-athletes. The impact of their visionary generosity on past, present, and future Wildcats is truly incomparable. Uh, the rebuilt Ryan Field will be a world-class venue between the institution's pursuit of excellence in all areas. Why don't you just say, you know what, every time we need, we really need something for our student-athletes in our program, the Ryan family comes through. They've been incredible. Why can't you say that? <laughs> Instead, he come up with blah, 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 blah. It's like, God. I, I'll read press releases sometime only for the comedy of it. This is comical. What do you think we should say here? Something genuine or something phony? They may have to play, it, when they're doing this, they may have to play a few games at Soldier Field. Sounds like they're going to be doing this at P. So they may have to, you know, they're going to be, it has to do with uh, Ryan Field's 47,000 seats. And they haven't done anything to it since 97. Uh, I know they had to put in ADA seating, which is if you see at Beaver Stadium. Beaver Stadium is now, what, 106? Uh, what is it? Beaver Stadium is like 106, 652 or some number like that. It used to be 107, 320 or something like that. You ever say, well, why they reduce the seating? Because they put the ADA seating at the bottom. They took out the first three rows. And they put ADA seating in the first three rows. That's you know, that's why they lost 700, almost 800 seats in the stadium years ago. That's what they'll have to do at Ryan Field. They'll have to, you know, they'll have to put ADA seating. It's probably going to be down in the bottom area of that stadium. You know, it, it is incredible when you have – we talk about big fish, lots of big fish, lots of big fish. But, man, it helps to – it really helps to have a couple of whales. <laughs> and the Ryan family, obviously, that's a big-time whale <laughs> over, at the, over at Northwestern. Big time. Um, hmm. Big-time whales really what's kept Matt going. Matt, you know, Matt doesn't he hangs with whales. That's right. No. I mean, that's what you do, right? What you're all about. Yeah, sometimes. See, I frustrate you. That is correct. Sometimes so you do. Why do I frustrate you? <laughs> why do I frustrate you? Because you're a party pooper because sometimes. I be, because I don't. Because I don't play the game. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, well, seriously. You put it that I, way. I, I mean, I mean it. Because I don't play the game. I refuse to play the game. Right. Yes. And I'm a party pooper because I don't play the game. Now, why do I have the attitude I have? Why do you think? That's just how you always, that's just how you focus on. You focus on the, the preparation and what's in front of you. It's experience. There you go. Experience me. I mean, it, I've experienced a lot, and I've also seen it from a different angle than most. Now, I realize I am completely, thoroughly fortunate, I mean completely and thoroughly fortunate, that I've been allowed to see it from a different point of view, to see it more from the inside. And when you do, you develop different attitudes about things as to what actually is important and what's not. You can't leave any stone unturned. But see, that's one of the reasons I refuse to play the game. I refuse to play the game because I don't think it's real. You sit there and go, nah, that's not really how it works. 
Now, I'm not putting down anybody as a way, but I mean, like I say, we're, yeah, we're all going to row the boat. You need a saying? Really? You need a saying to be good. How about this? Like, you're like two and eight. Like, it, that's bad. <laughs> okay. I don't care any, I don't, I don't care any oars you have. How about some pride? So you think I'm a party pooper? <laughs> Sometimes you can be. But you're reasonable, and I respect that. I'm reasonable because, uh, again, I've got a completely different, and I'm fortunate to have the point of view. But I don't believe in revenge games. I don't believe in, I don't believe in any of that stuff. If you're not prepared, you're still going to get beat. We've got revenge. That's all we need. Oh, good. How about, like, preparing for it? No? Now, does it make for a bad show? Sure. Because, I mean, it'd be a fun show if I'm out out here talking about revenge and all the other stuff that I sit back and go. (laughs) I, I just don't believe in that stuff. And I don't believe in that stuff because... When you're around it all the time, you gotta get a little different viewpoint on. I would, I would, I would think you would appreciate the fact that I bring a different viewpoint. No, I do. That's why I said I, I, I respect that side. You just don't like the fact that I won't play the game. Oh, maybe. Now, why don't I play the game? Experience, yeah. Because I'm not going to lie to people. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and lie to you about it. You know, it's you know. And are there moments where are there moments when people are getting ready and things like that or something? Um, where even like the coaches and players are confused about what the answer is and things like that. Sure, there are. But, you know, it's like, uh, boy, that great pep talk before the game. You run out of the tunnel. Crowd's going crazy. Then what do you do? What do you do? Well, then you get ready to play, and you play. And it's all about the game once the ball kicks off. Yeah, yeah, but what do you do for 10 minutes after you run out and you're all like, eh, what happens? Well, you Nothing. To, yeah, no. <laughs> you have to wait. <laughs> okay. You don't run out of the tunnel and you're running right at them. <laughs> you run down, boom, settle down. Now you got to play. And if you're, you know, depending on who wins the toss, your unit may be on the sideline for the first three minutes of, of the game. <laughs> okay. So what do you do? It's like, <laughs> but boy, we had that pep talk. <laughs> right? We had that pep talk. What do you think? We go in the booth, we all go, one, two, three, go. <laughs> we put the headsets on and start talking. What do you... <laughs> it's like, come on. Just for one game, you should do that on the... Uh, on behind the mic. <laughs> that would get you a ton more viewers. People would watch every week. Like you and Jack do a breakdown. Jack gives you like a chest bump. I'd love to see that. Get Matt in there, too. Get Matt McGloin in there. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. (laughs) Why Jack and I are are passionate about what we do. In all honesty, all right? And Jack and I have talked about this. Okay, so I'm not not talking out of turn here because we've talked about this. You become really ingrained in what's going on when you're fully invested in it. Right. So when you know the Wisconsin game's over, Jack looks over at me and says, "Man, I feel like we played." Oh, you know the emotion of it, every single play, a grind. Right. Said that to me after the Auburn game. He says, "God, I feel like we played." 
He says, and sometimes this is worse than when I played. Because we're fully invested in what's going on. And we've talked about, we've used those words, being fully invested. You know, this isn't just like a job to us or anything like that. You know, did you listen to how Jesse Lucchetta talked to Jack after the game? Oh, yeah. Jack's talked with Jesse, because Jack's talked with Jesse Lucchetta a lot. He's talked a lot with Ellis Brooks. He's talked a lot with Curtis Jacobs, Brandon Smith. You know, he's, he's, you know, Jack's invested his time in talking to them. No, I thought Jesse was very honest they, and very sincere. Right, but I'm saying, though, because, because Jack has talk, spent a lot of time talking with these guys because Jack's fully invested in what's going on. And you know what? No, and you know what? The topic never came up. Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> It's a worthless dish that doesn't taste good, okay? Yeah, he's, he's, you know, he'll talk about the technical side of it. He'll talk about taking angles, what they see, scraping on a blitz, things like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Let's, let's take a, let, let, let's take a play. Okay, so let's take a play in the last game. All right, let's have a little fun here. All right. The play where Brenton Strange goes for 40 yards. Remember the formation they lined up in? That was the play where they took Caden Wallace, the tackle, and moved the, moved him out into the slot. Okay? Remember this play now? Yes. Okay. In fact, Caden's really funny. He, like, squares up throwing the ball. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> that, was, that, was actually, that was actually funny the way he did that. It's the right thing to do, but... So that play, of course, was not just put in this week. That play's been in for a while. There's nothing they ran on Saturday night that has not been practiced for a while. You have to keep practicing, not every day, but you got to, you know, you have to practice certain plays along the way because you can't use the play unless all 11 people know how to run it. So let's take something like that play. You have to line up each one of those guys on the outside, the three of them, have to line up in specific spots because you don't want a, quote, ineligible receiver to be downfield because of your alignment, which is very possible in a play like that if you're lined up wrong. Right? And then, boom, you run it. Bang! Okay, it's you know the, you know they make you think you're going that way with a big offense, and instead you're going the other way to Strange. If you have somebody that can't even line up right, you can't run that play. This is why I'm talking about the preparation, the execution of it. This is a play, one, and the success of that play all begins with the alignment, completely. If somebody lines up wrong. You now have an ineligible receiver who's covered up or uncovered, whatever it may be. So even something as simple as just, you know, we're the decoys, but we are the decoys that are lined up properly, thus there's no penalty on the play and we're able to run the play. Now, you know what motivated that play? It's a good question. Revenge. All right, now. <laughs> Get the lingerie on the deck. Call the janitor. You know, but you, but see, you. this is what you do all week in practice. There's certain things that are standards you work on all the time. Then every once in a while you'll throw something in. And something that you may not use this week, you may not use for a month. Okay. But you got to keep, you know, and it's all about how you prepare, how you get ready. Okay? Why are P.J. Mustafer and Jaquan Brisker off to great starts? Guess who the first two guys are on the practice field are every single day? Mustafer and Brisker. Every day. 
they're the first two guys out every day. And they each take time to work on something that they think they need or they aren't comfortable with or feel they need to be better at. It may, it may be five minutes, it may be ten minutes. But that's what the two of them do every day. Or else, okay, I'm doing pretty well, but I just want to make sure I'm, I'm fresh on my fundamentals. Every day. Okay, that's investment. Okay, need some idea. Yeah, Tariq Castro feels extra reps on the jugs gun. Fire that thing at me. Bang, bang, bang. Okay. Sean Clifford, extra time in the video room. Okay, they do this, they do this, they do this. It's, it's the investment part of it where you're, everything you do Sunday through. Okay. Because Monday is your day for, for class, but you've got players on their own that are watching video, getting a lift in, something like that. It's that kind of investment where you feel like you leave no stone unturned. And in practice, you have to have all 11 players locked in or else that play, that one play I just talked about, can't work if you line up the wrong way. Well, it's easy to line up. No, it's not. How easy is it for Caden Wallace to line up in the right spot on the spot of the field that he hasn't been all night? There's a lot that goes into this, and there's not a lot of time for the, for the other stuff. See, Matt, you got all the time in the world. Fans of all the time in the world. Good. I'm glad they, they're motivated by revenge. That's great because it's going to make them louder. The players, man, they got to they got to get ready to make sure they're ready. And I frustrate you. <laughs> you hate logic. Oh, my almighty! But that's that's the bottom line. Is I I just I don't play the, I don't play the traditional game. I've never I've never have. And the reason I have it is that you like you don't have time for this stuff. What do you think I'm going to, you know, Indiana, that last play, you know what I'm going to do for the broadcast? I'm going to prepare harder. Really? <laughs> okay. Shikalumi's got Jersey Shore this week, right? Correct. At Jersey Shore. The suit's How much favorite is place. Wild? How much does Roger put out for additional security on this stuff? No, senor! No, senor! No, senor! Wow, he's on his own. That's not good. <laughs> By the way, Roger, happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday to the boss. Happy birthday to one of the greatest guys on the planet. He's awesome. Just, I mean, I'm talking like, like not, I mean, boss aside, he's just an awesome dude. Happy birthday. All right, back with more in a moment. So you got your game today? You're actually going to play? Seems like it. I haven't gotten the call. They're determined to play this thing, I guess. Wow. Mount Carmel at Central right Columbia Girls. It's been heavy at times, but not like monsoonish. Are they playing on turf? They are playing on turf, so I guess oh, unless, if, unless they get thunder and lightning, they're going to try to play through it. Wow. Boy, <laughs> This suit's going to Jersey Shore. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to drive up there just to see the reception. <laughs> As we continue here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. S U I T, that spells suit. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle's worth. The SMC way is to offer you all 
applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way. The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. 